America's movable fighting man ended his first tour of duty in 1969 after six years fighting for freedom wherever there was trouble. After 13 years of shore leave adventures, he reinvented himself and re-enlisted to combat a new terror that had risen to power in his absence. No longer a 12-inch figure with interchangeable outfits and customizable loadouts, Hasbro shrunk him down to four inches and put the focus on the G.I. Joe DMV. Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and these are the 10 best G.I. Joe vehicles. G.I. Joe spans several different eras, including the 1960s 12-inch figures, as well as the modern 25th or 30th or 50th anniversary era, which began in 2007 and includes all the movie stuff. But for the purpose of this list, we're only talking about the three and three quarter inch line that ran from 1982 to 1994, known as G.I. Joe, a real American hero. And listen, I love, love, love the USS flag, but the reality is that the flag is a playset that looks like a vehicle, but is not actually a vehicle. As designed, it cannot be moved, and I don't know, I feel like that disqualifies you for a list about vehicles. Number 10 is 1987's G.I. Joe Defiant Space Vehicle Launch Complex. Hasbro took everything in their toy box and put it in yours. It's one of the biggest and most complex vehicle slash playsets in the line, heck, in all of toy history. It weighs as much as five bags of potatoes. It's big enough to house a baby or a small dog. It features a crank-operated lift mechanism that still works on like 10% of the surviving samples. It was packed with two different figures and is actually technically three different vehicles in one. You're not going to get very far or very fast driving the launch platform crawler itself, but it is on wheels, so worst case scenario, it is a travel option. The booster can be piloted and turns into a space station, and of course the shuttle itself is a shuttle itself. Nothing quite like it has ever been released, and likely never will be. Number nine is 1982 G.I. Joe Rapid Fire Motorcycle or Ram. Size isn't everything. The Ram may not be able to launch a whole squad of Space Joes into orbit or store a whole bag of potatoes, but it is one of the meanest motorcycles ever designed. It is beautifully simple, government issue, military clunk at its finest, form following function, ride fast and shoot lots of bullets. Who hasn't daydreamed about having a sidecar Vulcan cannon on any vehicle to take care of literal blockades that life puts in front of your transportation? Fence, gone. Wall, gone. Snow, ice, rain, fog, gone. Number eight is 1983 Cobra High Speed Sentry or Hiss Tank. The acronym is a bit of a stretch, but that's a crime being committed on both sides of this war, so don't put all the blame on Cobra. The Hiss was one of the first vehicles that Cobra rolled into combat with establishing themselves as a terrorist organization that wasn't just about shooting at stuff, but doing it with a sense of style that was uniquely theirs. As black as the night with bright red serial numbers and insignias, the Hiss was 90% tank treads, 10% dual cannons. While the toy was a milestone for this line, it would have ranked higher on this list if only those tank treads had been actual working tank treads instead of decoration for the plastic wheels on the bottom. Number seven is 1987 Cobra Mamba. Helicopters abound in the battle between Cobra and G.I. Joe. Big helicopters, little helicopters, one, two, sometimes as many as three rotors. The Mamba stood out from all the other helicopters thanks to three cockpits, two of which were actually independently launchable flight pods, allowing a single Mamba to attack a Joe from three different directions at once. On top of that, it features the most mesmerizing, most unexplainable feat of toy engineering, a set of dual rotors that intersect with one another, spinning at the same time, the same rate, perfectly in sync, and never touching each other. I didn't understand how it worked then, and I don't understand how it works now. Nothing that flaunts the laws of physics like that is welcome in my collection. Number six is 1986's G.I. Joe Tomahawk. The whole reason Cobra had to invent the Mamba was to counter G.I. Joe's dual rotor helicopter delivered the year before. The Tomahawk carries a full payload of missiles, bombs, and a pivoting forward cannon. It has an opening cockpit with movable flight control yokes, a cargo ramp out the back, a winch on the bottom, seats six comfortably, and even has two mounted machine guns in the troop transport area to cover Joe's being picked up or dropped off. Number five is 1986 Cobra Firebat. The Firebat was originally available in 1986 and 1987 as a pack-in with the Cobra Terror Drome. Check out our video on that if you haven't already. It's up here, right? 
but it was also available via mail order from 1988 to 1993 in a slightly brighter red plastic. Cobra is the bad guys, we can all agree on that. That said, Destro, or whoever is in charge of vehicle design, is doing an inspired job. Just the name Firebat sparks the imagination, conjuring up a menacing, fiery, bat-winged aircraft, and the actual thing does not disappoint. Missiles, bombs, a machine gun, folding wings for compact storage, the pilot, AVAC, even comes with a removable flight harness. With or without the terror drone, it's a must-have piece. Number four is 1986 Cobra Night Raven S3P. Heavily inspired by the real-life Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird, Cobra took very few liberties with its own design. The original Blackbird was intended to have an unmanned drone attached to the back. Cobra, learning from the failure of the unmanned real-life drone project, and having plenty of loyal soldiers to spare, stuck a pilot inside that thing. It's big, sleek, black, has working retractable landing gear that also activate a set of air brakes, and it has a hidden missile compartment underneath. The Night Raven was a huge speed and stealth upgrade from their previous aircraft. Number three is 1984 Warrior Hovering Assault Launch Envoy, or WHALE. This is a case of the acronym coming first and what each letter stands for having to be filled in after the fact, there's a colon after WARRIOR for cripes sake. It's not WHALE, it's WHAIL. Envoy? I had to look up Envoy because I did not know what the actual dictionary definition was and needed to know for sure if it applied in this context. An Envoy is a messenger or representative, especially one on a diplomatic mission. It's about the loosest interpretation of Envoy that you could go with. But we're going to let all of that slide because not only was the whale huge, not only did it have a full arsenal of cannons, missiles, and depth charges, but it had button-activated propulsion fans, a recon sled that launched out the front, and a motorcycle, I assume, for doing sweet jumps over sharks. Number two is 1984 Cobra Rattler, based on the real-life A-10 Warthog, but with Cobra-designed wing-mounted vertical takeoff and landing engines and a rear gunner position, the Rattler was the menace of the skies. When it comes to an aerial show of force, nothing tops the eye-blistering display of firepower visible from any angle of this flying death and destruction dispenser. Retractable landing gear, a pilot clad in red and black flight suit, along with the Hiss tank, it is one of the signature Cobra vehicles as iconic as Cobra Commander and Destro's shiny metal faces. <laughs> it was a multi-purpose fighter equipped for air-to-air -air combat as much as extremely low altitude strafing and bombing runs. It's a tank killer in our world, it's an everything killer in the world of G.I. Joe. And at number one is 1983's XP-14F Sky Striker, the first thing that appears in the first frames of animation for the first cartoon opening theme song in 1983 is three Sky Strikers flying overhead. It featured variable sweep wings for superior maneuverability, it's the same kind of airplane used by Maverick and Goose in Top Gun, and me when I pretend that I daydream about being Maverick and Goose in Top Gun. That's right, Ice Man, I am dangerous. While the Sky Striker only came with a single pilot, Ace, wearing a spacesuit for some reason, it was a two-seater and both of those seats had parachutes attached to them should your play scenario require one or both pilots to exit the craft on short notice. In only the second year of the line, it was a definitive piece demonstrating Hasbro's willingness to go big. 23 inches from tail to nose and 23 inches across from extended wingtip to wingtip, the Sky Striker was huge compared to everything that had been released for Cobra or the Joes up to that point and would continue to be one of the biggest pieces in the line until its cancellation 12 years later. Those are the 10 best G.I. Joe vehicles, 50% Joe and 50% Cobra. From motorcycles to space shuttles and everything in between, G.I. Joe delivered a wide and varied assortment of styles, sizes, and price points to move your troops in and out of battle, around the world, over land and sea and air, into space and back again. Thanks for watching. Please give this video a like. Please subscribe if you aren't already a subscriber to guarantee that you never miss any of our videos. And let us know in the comments down below what you think the best G.I. Joe vehicle is. It hurt to disqualify the flag so early in the process, but without building a base for it and putting it on wheels or something, it's no more a vehicle than the headquarters or the terror drone. It doesn't matter how it moves to be ranked on this list, but it's got to be able to move somehow. And that is the only thing the flag can't do. Sorry. Yeah, it's just not your fault.